Hello, and welcome back to the Manage Engine Insights podcast. I'm John Donegan, an enterprise analyst at Manage Engine, and I'll be your host. Today, we're talking about cybersecurity and data privacy, and I'm pleased to be joined by Frank Satterwhite. Frank is the founder and CEO of 1600 Cyber, a pan-European cyber consultancy, and he's also the founder of 1600 Avenue, a nonprofit based in Silicon Valley and Los Angeles. A global cybersecurity expert, Frank leads the handling of cyber attacks that are causing geopolitical instability. He relentlessly raises awareness, protects privacy online, and coordinates responses to attacks that are threatening military, financial, government, and society's global business infrastructures. Frank is perhaps most proud of his advocacy for diversity in STEM, particularly for women and disadvantaged groups. He speaks with us from Frankfurt. I was all excited uh, reading your bio for many reasons, but I'll let you give a brief intro if you don't mind. And um, and also, um, yeah. So for, for me, cybersecurity is, um, I'm so passionate about it because everything we do, everything we care about, everything that's in our future, in our, in our children's future and society's future is dependent on cybersecurity. So from a corporate and for-profit perspective, we have a cyber consultancy in Europe. Uh, we work with different clients, um, you know, O2, um, different pharmaceutical companies, um, you know, banking, financial institutions, also have a long um, and background with NATO and the US military where I was doing cybersecurity. But the reason I started my cybersecurity consultancy is to affect more change. I didn't feel like the communities were getting the cyber expertise they needed. And then also I didn't feel like this, the private sector was getting it as well. Um, so the technical skills I have, the passion I have, the leadership skills I've developed with great mentors, I'm channeling that to make society more safe, both in the for-profit arena, because those big companies employ lots of people that have families, and if they're not secure and their, their bottom line's not being met, those people won't have jobs. Mm -hmm. And then on the community side, churches, YMCAs, schools, they are facing the same cyber threats, but because there's not enough money you know, big cyber companies don't look at a church and say, you know what, let's prioritize getting more clients as churches. Mm -hmm. Our organization on the nonprofit side is trying to take the desperately needed cyber protections to the communities and the organizations the communities count on like churches. So sure. in summary, um, I'm a nerd, <laughs> but I'm one that's passionate about protecting people and society and our way of life. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, it's a very noble um, calling you've undertaken. You're looking out for uh, disenfranchised groups, right? And an increasing diversity in technology. And also you're, I, I love that. And then also you're a, a big uh, privacy advocate, which is super important, su super important. I heard some quotes here. Um, well, this is from one of 1600 Avenues press releases. So 1600 Avenues, the nonprofit. Yes, um, sir. And um, so you said the weaponization of mobile phones has reached uh, uh, dystopian levels. And that's really um, actually not that contentious. That's pretty accurate. And then every day our privacy is being violated. I heard you tell, um, I think, Melise, Melise on the uh, Bulletproof podcast. Yes, Marlene, uh, yes. Our uh, friend. <laughs> oh. Ah, nice, nice. Well, I really enjoyed that talk you had with her, and I really enjoyed the um, research I did on your organizations last night. Um, so, again, I'm personally really excited to have you on here. Um, and uh, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your concerns related to user data privacy in general. And then if you want, you can even get into these other things. I know you did like a My Vote app and a Priv sure. app. Sure. So... <clears throat> What, with, with privacy right now, this, mm -hmm. if right now you went to society and its citizens and you said, you know what, the government is going to give you a tracking device and it's going to monitor your activities 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. It's going to share your most intimate details to people you don't know. And then this information, the government's going to be going to use to control you. Yeah. Um, people would be rioting in the streets. Mm -hmm. And so what's, what's happening, why well, I gave that example 
is because people don't understand the, the magnitude of how they approach their privacy. It's not just affecting them, but society in general. And when you hear people talk, so many times it starts sounding conspiratorial. You mm -hmm. start hearing a lot of they's and, you, you, and this isn't conspiracy theory. Yeah, when you no. have a phone and you have social media apps loaded, if you've lo downloaded free apps, your privacy, your pictures, your personal information, what you like to watch, where you like to go, how much money you spend, how much money you make, you have basically opened a door to the Facebooks and the Googles to extract this information, process it, and then once they have information and they know you inside and out because they've taken all this data from your phone, right? They can kind of they can manipulate your behavior. Yeah. They can help decide elections. Right. They, they yeah. can help influence what your kids see as important. So from a privacy perspective, what we're trying to wake people up to is, hey, listen, it's okay to have a smartphone, but you use the technology, don't let it use you. And sure. so you can have the smartest people in the world, but if they don't have the education, they don't have the tools, they don't have the technology, in order to, once they have this awareness that we're trying to give them, to actually do something about the problem, then like the two have to be married. So what right. we're doing, we're teaching people what they need to know to stop hackers from hacking, to stop big tech from stealing their data. And then once we teach them, we're giving them the technology through apps, tools, also education through videos and seminars and webinars and training events to, to actually with this awareness, here's what you need to stop it. Right. So the apps, were, the, the main app we have right now is Priv. Mm -hmm. It's a mobile phone app. It'll, we're releasing it um, by June. And Priv literally allows you to control who, access, who has access to you. Right, right. Who can, who can, which apps can connect to the internet, right? right. Which, which social media apps can know your preferences, you know. Um, also, there's malware protection. So for ransomware and, and phishing attacks. But, but the, right. the key is, we're not telling you what to do. We're just telling you what's going on and then we are giving you the tools and education and technology. So you literally control can control what your phone is doing, when it's doing it, and how it's doing it. Because if you don't, this is just like having an FBI agent that's, you know, you know, the little angel and the devil on your shoulder. This, this, this is, this phone is literally on your shoulder everywhere you go and it right. tracks everything you do. And ultimately it can influence you. That's the, sure, that's the sure. end result. Sure. Sure. And, and a lot of people, uh, myself included, don't probably don't realize, you know, which apps are tracking me necessarily on the mobile phone and, and if they're selling my data to third parties and what have you. Um, uh, I guess I would ask you next and, and just for the listener, uh, I apologize for not giving you these questions in advance. So all these are off the no, cuff. No, it's okay. Frank, uh, well, I'm not I rehearsed. Have, I'm very authentic. So it, it's, I'm talking about what I'm passionate about, what I believe in. Okay. Sadly, me too. I'm not rehearsed. And I'm also, <laughs> um, so uh, now in the States, at least, we have a lack of strong data privacy laws. We're behind in uh, regulations, kind of the nature of, of uh, regulation technology is kind of, kind of always ahead. And as you said, some companies are really, you you listed Google and Facebook, and and, and it's true. They're really egregious in their um, behavior. Do you think that we need a uh, federally mandated uh, U.S. data privacy law similar to like the GDPR in the States or... So the, there are some privacy laws. I, I do, um, I'm an engineer, so I do data privacy solutions as well as a consultant for that. But mm -hmm. um, before I answer that, let me just point out something you said earlier. You said, well, a lot of us don't know which apps are tracking us or stealing our data. Mm -hmm. What, what Priya will do, um, and my nonprofit is offering it for download for free at uh, www.1600avenue.com. What Priya will do, it will show you exactly what apps you have on the phone, 
what they're doing, are they, each app it shows you, are they accessing your microphone? Are they accessing your, your camera? You know, mm. it'll show you who these apps are connecting to in the world. So literally, if you, you have apps on your phone, each app has several processes. These processes are connecting to servers all over the world. Mm. What Priv will allow you to do is look at a pie chart and say, oh, I have 10 apps connecting to China. I have four apps connecting to the United States, three to Ireland. Mm. And then you can go in and manage the settings and either disable the, the, the connections or the application. You can change their permissions. You can remove them. Or if you want to use them, at least you are doing so knowing what is happening with that particular app. And Edward Snowden, he, he had a quote. He, um, I don't agree with everything he's done. I've had a high level security clearance most of my life. But oh, yeah, I failed to mention that. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, it's okay. Working for NATO in the military, I had that. But bringing him up for this specific point, he said, he's talking about the government. He said, you know, everywhere you go, everything you do, they're, they're you know, you're being monitored, especially through your phone. And he said, people have never had the technology to have the visibility of what's going on. It's just this nebulous thing. Well, with Priv and what my organization's offering, you can see it. You see everything. And you, yeah. and then once you see it, you know, it, it's, it's up to the person to do something. Mm -hmm. But be before now, you couldn't see it. So to Edward Snowden's point, we now do have the technology where everyday people that aren't super technical can pick up their phone and say, you know what? My phone is connecting to China. I'll just disable that. And it's usually something you downloaded for free. And in the background, there are things running you can't see. Well, right, we expose right. those things. Right. OK, um, so now, sorry. <laughs> but no, the no. Past, um, you asked about the regulations. So I believe there should be re more regulations, but I don't think they'll be effective. Oh, OK. And the, the reason is. Um, Right now with the internet, they're just, some of these regulations are really hard to enforce, right? Um, but what I know for a fact we can do that will be effective is each person, get everybody, you, me, everybody, get educated on what's happening, take control of your life by getting the education. It's not just from, not just from our organization. There are other good organizations that are doing good work. Mm -hmm. The point is, be committed to finding out what is happening and how you can stop it. And then once you get to that point, then what's required is an organization like ours to give you the technology to be empowered to stop it. Sure, right? sure. Yeah, yeah. And you have a third division, 1600 Music, and you had a background. Mm -hmm. You were a DJ, as I understand, a radio DJ. Back in the still day. Am. <laughs> oh, oh, still now, I've recently started DJing again on the radio. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm, so I'm a music nerd. <laughs> no, no, no. It's cool. And um, and you're partnered with um, uh, the commissioner KRS One gave him that name according to Wikipedia, which is very impressive. Yes. I, they're um, from the same neighborhood, and and uh, Gordon says the name just kind of stuck because he's he's Gordon Williams and and the commissioner. Um, so for music, Gordon cares deeply about the community, right? Mm -hmm. And some of the problems that are happening, um, especially with privacy and misuse of tech. Mm -hmm. So the way, if, if I held a speech, I, I gave out flyers and did radio promotions. I gave a speech that I'm going to talk about all these things. Some people might show up. But mm -hmm. if we create music mm -hmm. that talks about these problems, which is what Gordon and I want to do, create music that talks about these problems, it's an amplifier, right? So sure. now I'm talking, music connects with people in ways most things can't. So mm -hmm. now we're, everything we've talked about on this call today is now in a song. Mm -hmm. It has lyrics, mm -hmm. it has a hook, it has bass line. Mm -hmm. And then that song carries the message to cultures all over the world. I have worked so many countries I've been in the Ukraine where they do not speak English, mm -hmm. but guess what? They know the lyrics. They know every word of the song. 
Yeah. So, so the goal is music is kind of like our marketing division. Right. We're going to promote. We're going to try to get more tablet. Gordon is a passion about getting tablets to the St. Lucian communities where he's from. He's also an ambassador. So, um, but we're going to use music to, to do drives in the Caribbean. We're going to use music to promote the privacy violations that are going on. We're going to use music to make the community aware of how tech can be good. Yeah. Yeah. And use no, for hard. good. Yeah. So that's yeah, our really, marketing plan. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really smart. Um, and one other thing, really, uh, really quick. Um, uh, music, uh, when I was at UC Berkeley, I had a mm-hmm. record label. Yo, yes. Had some yeah, had some West Coast rap or gangster rap artists did pretty well, um, but even at that time, um, instead of continuing with music, my passion became more to help the community. I think God just put that on my spirit. But what's so perfect about what's going on right now is we uh, integrated music with technology. Mm-hmm. So the same passion I, I had for music, running a record label or DJ. It's, it's, I'm doing it in tech, and that passion for, for tech and music combined is the perfect way to not only get the attention of our communities, and when I say our communities, I mean, it's not about color. It's, it's just yeah. four communities and communities that are disenfranchised have the same problems. So, so use this formula yeah. to get solutions that change and make people's lives better, which is what tech is supposed to do that combination is very powerful to accomplish that goal. Right. Right. Yeah. No, um, that's amazing. Um, you're probably too young. Tupac Shakur was in the Bay area for a time, but of I think course, of course, I love Tupac. I love <laughs> Tupac. <laughs> but, but you, you know, too, I think Tupac was really misunderstood. I'm, I'm not a, mm-hmm. I'm not the person, the source to go to for rap history or hip hop history. That's mm-hmm. not what my comments coming from. Mm-hmm. I do recognize passion. Yeah. And yeah. if you look at what he's trying to do, most of the time in the music, he sees something. And instead of just walking up to you and say, hey, you know, you know, this is we're having a problem over here with the, the, the girls not being treated properly by, by the men in the community. Mm-hmm. That's that's not how it's coming out. It's coming out with right. fire and and that's why I got everybody's attention. Right. That's what I want to do right now with right. I want to come bring that sort of passion wrap tech around and say hey listen I've got the I've got the solution to your problem. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And I think if I understand you correctly you're a big STEM advocate so you you, um, you also see it as a way to get a lot of these folks who normally wouldn't be interested in tech at all to, you know, go into higher education and get jobs. And I think you provide a lot of jobs through your consultancy as well. Um, I could talk about the music stuff forever, but uh, Priyanka will kill me. I, we, can, uh, we can talk about whatever you like, but I, I will tell you as far as the tech and the STEM being a STEM advocate, I'm really mm-hmm. proud of that work. Um, I am 100 million percent committed to it. Uh, we recently did an international women's day where we had all these thought leaders from Europe Sea level and, and senior leaders from Europe and the state, Silicon Valley, come together and just really create a, create some this powerful event that hopefully impacted a lot of people because it, it gave stories of tragedy, triumph, um, challenges, how to overcome challenges. It gave people tools to use to, to better themselves in terms of uh, women or disenfranchised groups wanting to pursue careers in STEM and be successful. So right. that event was in March for International Women's Day, but day to day, one of the priorities for what I'm involved with or anyone that works for me is involved with is there is a concerted effort to prioritize creating opportunities for women in tech. Not, oh, not, not as a favor to women, but right. one, that women are just as capable. Sure. And two, anytime you have any industry and there's not equality, Mm-hmm. And right yeah. now, no one can say there's equality in tech for women. No. Then you can either stand on the sidelines and watch. Or I believe that if you are in a position to do something about it, that God expects you to do something about it. So 
we, we um, are more focused on providing opportunities with younger, like getting teens inspired, teen girls. We do conferences at UC Berkeley. We've done them at UCLA, three or four day conferences. Um, an organization called AWIT, they, they kind of are nurturing the young career path, um, the women that are just early in their career path to give them an encouragement to continue. But for us, our, they're a community partner, but for us, our focus is that girl who's 14, hey, you can do this. And yeah. we're, we're here for you to kind of let you know when it gets hard, or you don't feel like you're good enough or you're smart enough or imposter syndrome. You have someone you, have someone you can count on. Last thing is um, with respect to what we want to accomplish in STEM. People, when you have something in life and it's hard, mm -hmm. some people don't want to approach it. But the majority of people, if you say, listen, if you do this, you'll get this. Mm -hmm. The majority of people, and they think getting this is realistic and not just talk. Mm -hmm. The majority of people are willing to make the commitment. So our, our focus is, listen, if we're talking to young black males or um, uh, Latin or Mexican males or poor white males or young teen girls, whatever it is that are suffering from socioeconomic um, conditions and circumstances. If I go to you and I say, listen, I've done this already, what I'm going to tell you. Go to school for four years. Let us mentor you. Let's get you into to mentorships and internships. Hmm. Let us help you enter into the career workforce. At the end of that, you're going to get a job. You're going to probably start at about sixty or seventy thousand dollars. In a few years, you're going to make more than a hundred thousand dollars, and for the rest of your life, you will make more than a hundred thousand dollars. I'm asking you to give me the next six years of your life to have to make more than a hundred thousand dollars for most of your life, because that's what engineers make, or more sure. even. Sure, sure. Get if if we get that message across. It's it's it, it's not an easy sell. No. But it's at the same time, it's something that a lot of teens will make the investment into becoming engineers and right. being willing to look the other way when it comes to opportunities for easy money or shortcuts. Right. Right. And so are you seeing you must be seeing more and more people um you know, crossing that line and coming into STEM, uh, more women, more young women uh, doing so? Yes and no. Um, so we've seen, prog we've, we've seen a lot of progress, for sure. But what happens is, to me, there needs to be more. Mm. You'll see companies in their posts, yeah, these statistics, or we, 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 you know, we stated this program and we've got this percentage of women higher, this percentage of Black males hire this person. And, and that's all great. That's a good start, right? Mm -hmm. But um, what I see and what I know is there's an opportunity to do a lot more. I don't want one in 10 girls. It's less than that, actually. But I don't mm -hmm. want one in 10 girls to pursue engineering. I want five in 10, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I want yeah. five in 10 young Black males to pursue engineering. Five yeah. in 10, five or more, even more, but you know, for me, how you know you made a difference is when there's more people doing it than not doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I think <laughs> so at least 50% is, is yeah, I don't care what the statistics say, I want at least 50%. Right, right. And there's so many um, jobs, right? There's so much demand and not enough supply. So I think it's a great um a field for everyone to go into for well, sure. Well, it is like so. One thing you can't do when you work in inner cities or disenfranchised group, your word has to mean something. You can't mm -hmm. promise things you can't do. So when mm -hmm. I tell somebody, a, young, a sixteen year old, hey, listen, you give me these six years, mm -hmm. I'm going to get you this this high paying career. Right. I wouldn't say that if I didn't know that there are tons of high paying careers not being filled right now because there's not the the, the skill set. I yeah. see this as an opportunity to change the dynamics of poor communities 
Mm -hmm. but also to, to create this new pipeline of talent where yeah. someone that looks like me, who I used to wear, I still do, a baseball hat, or I want to wear some jeans, and I don't want to have a pocket pencil, and, and you know, I'm an mm -hmm. athlete or something. Mm -hmm. I can also be viewed as an engineer and be part of the solution to this talent shortage in with respect to STEM, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's also part of the goal is, hey, listen, do you... And I, I've done this before, and I'm not trying to be arrogant right now. <clears throat> yeah. When I'm talking to kids, I pull up my LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. On my LinkedIn, or my emails. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Satterwhite, we have this project. Would you like to work? It pays XYZ, which is a lot. You see their eyes light up. And I show them 15, 20 emails. Right. For today. Yeah. yeah. Or, or over the course of the last couple of days. And mm -hmm. I say, you all... I want you to have 50 emails in your inbox and you can do it. I didn't have anybody really to mention me properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you listen, you will never look for another job the rest of your life because you'll be in such demand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Companies will know you have so much to offer, not, not just your technical skills, but you can go enter this workforce and be who you are as well. Yeah. True. So, no, no, I think it's great. Um, and um, I'm I'm pulling for um, not like you need my cheerleading. You're already killing it. No, but. it helps. Listen, <laughs> anybody who I'm, you know, I said this recently. Um, it's so important. People encourage people. Mm -hmm. Like someone like me, I, I'm not trying to help kids because I want someone shouting my name or writing praises to me. Or encouragement, though, it helps, right? Because it mm -hmm. it it lets you know that, you know what, on this hard day, when you want to show you are making a difference, you are making a difference. Mm -hmm. you, you are making things better. So I, I tell everybody, just if you know someone who's doing something positive, reach out to them and just say, hey, whether it's a teacher, garbage person, uh, principal, not just doctors, lawyers, or engineers, but anybody. If you know someone doing something positive, say, hey, that's really great. You helped that early elderly woman today, you know, mm -hmm. at your at this home you work at. Right. Because it, it goes, it, I'm gonna tell you, someone like me, mm -hmm. when I see that, there's nothing that inspires me to do more than that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna double my efforts because maybe I am helping and, and I need to do more. Well, well, as far as I can tell, you're already doing a lot. You're you're in Germany now, but you also have home base on the West Coast still. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I'm always going to be a California kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. I, our nonprofit's based in the West, yep. in Silicon Valley in LA. We have some exciting partnerships with SAP and some other organizations that are being launched. Um, Martha mm -hmm. Diaz is another one on the East Coast we're starting a partnership with. So we, mm -hmm. we're getting roots there, but primarily the nonprofit's based in, in um, Silicon Valley in LA. And then mm -hmm. the for-profit consultancy is headquartered in Germany, but we also have an office in London. Oh, cool. Um, so to switch gears a little bit and talk about that, I'll be remiss if I, if um, right now I've just been talking about everything I was super interested in and I, I fell in love with your background and, and um, the, the filling in for Priyanka went from being a chore to being a delight, I will say. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, and, I, and I hope she gets better. Um, he didn't announce this, but the, the person that was going to interview me today, she's fallen ill and, and uh, we're praying for her. So, but it, yeah, we're praying for her, but I'm, I'm really honored that you feel that way. Uh, well, thanks. We appreciate that too. Um, and um, so just just to ask about cybersecurity in the geopolitical realm, as you said before, you throughout your career, the last you know, 15, 20 years, you've had top DOD clearances and top clearances with NATO. I'm wondering um, what your top concerns are at the moment and um, what type of cyber attacks are on the rise? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, this is, I'm a nerd, so I love this part. Um, you know, simply put, we do not have the level of protection in place that we need um, to protect societies. I, I can't talk in detail about the NATO military stuff, but mm -hmm. I can just say in general, um, two things that are really concerning. Mm -hmm. Even though the attacks have become more sophisticated, mm -hmm. and they have, 
If you, every time you hear someone hacked, a co big company hacked, you hear the CEO get on TV and say, hey, we're so sorry. Uh, we're, we're, we're implementing new, these new technologies. We're going to make it stronger. We're going to be more protected than ever. But they, they never say one thing. About 90% of the attacks still mm -hmm. require a person to do something wrong or make a mistake. Internally, you're saying? So the the most sophisticated attack, whether it's a solar wind attack, not all of them. We all know about the recent solar wind attack. Well, somebody stored credentials that allowed those attackers to gain initial access on a on a, a website. Right, um, these big yeah. phishing campaigns or ransomware attacks we hear about, someone is making a mistake to allowing the attacker to initially compromise the organization and then start moving laterally, right? So mm -hmm. the first part is it's very concerning. People, everyday people are more the solution to the problem than more tech, more guys like me, but no one's focusing on that. If you mm -hmm. get those 90%, if 90% of attacks, no matter how sophisticated, are initiated because someone made a mistake, if you get those people to create strong passwords, mm -hmm. practice best cybersecurity practices, if you're, if you're an admin, and just because you're an IT person doesn't mean you're practicing cybersecurity persons. In fact, IT people are some of the worst cybersecurity people. Because oh, they're wow. used to doing a job and they're used to doing it in a very con convenient way, but mm -hmm. it's not secure, i.e. sharing passwords or mm -hmm. using RDP without a VPN or not securely. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the question, people need to be getting smarter. Corporations need to invest in the workforce so they aren't making mistakes. And now what you've uh, uh, really done, you've taken, if you have 100% attack vector, you reduced mm -hmm. it to 10% for the attack to start. I see. Now, what has now what is what is definitely I, I want to be clear about, but once there's been a compromise, that part is getting way more sophisticated. So, mm. you know, there's there's defensive measures this malware takes where so it's not picked up by antivirus. The the hackers know what guys like me are gonna do when we're investigating something. So the, so they create uh, uh, TTPs that evade how I might monitor something or investigate the scene, the logs. or So, so once the attack st starts, that part keeps getting more and more sophisticated. So I, I agree with that. Um, yeah. And then the second part, um, I think AI. Oh. I think AI. You saw the movie The Terminator when... Yeah. Of course. No, no, really, being serious, like this is a conspiratorial, and and you know how um, Skynet mm -hmm. starts makes choices. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, and it goes a little bit back to the privacy. Well, right now, the artificial intelligence is outpacing the security. Mm. So, picture you wanted to go on vacation, mm -hmm. and you said. And maybe two years ago, you were thinking about going to Florida or California. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you log into your email or something, and you are seeing these ads for Florida or California, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's not by accident. Or mm -hmm. sometimes people have looked up something, and then five seconds later, there's an ad on Facebook for this thing. What I'm trying to say is the way data is being processed, and they say, well, we're trying to enhance your experience on the internet. We're trying to, to improve the quality of life. Mm. What they're really doing is trying to manipulate the quality of life. So mm -hmm. when you get to a point where artificial intelligence and someone out there says, you know what? And they're already doing it. I can make more money doing something malicious than I can improve make improve in someone's life. Or I can I can make more money spurring malicious behavior than then I then I think just like you you saw the pop-up ad for going to Florida, mm -hmm. you're gonna see things that point people in a malicious direction, make them believe certain things. The riot, the Capitol yeah. riot is a 
Yeah. Don't want to get political. Yeah. I don't care who people support, but I do want to say that what happened there was a direct result from these algorithms that social media use, uses. Because what happens is every day, those group of people, their news, their reality is what they see in their social media. And mm -hmm. these feeds, the information that comes through these feeds is prioritized based mm -hmm. on what a person likes, who mm -hmm. they know, but this is the most heavily weighted factor in the, the Facebook algorithm. Mm -hmm. And it's what they respond to. Okay. So literally what you see the most of in your newsfeed is stuff that you respond the most to. And mm -hmm. if you take certain groups of people, when the ex-president would say something, they're responding to certain things when their newsfeed, yeah. the information related to those ideas are what keep being fed to people day in, day again. And then what happens after so many months or so many years where someone's heard the same thing, it's like a dog whistle. They keep hearing the same thing. They're seeing it. This is their yeah. reality now. Right. To the Capitol riot. Right. For sure. No. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. And also we're seeing, or at least it seems like we're seeing increasingly more and more that there's state-sponsored disinformation campaigns. They're very savvy now since... 2016, it's been on my radar because, you know, the election. And I guess I'm wondering if the the bad actors are using AI and they're committing so many resources to aggregating yeah. people's data. Is there a way that the good actors too can use AI to kind of combat this? Well, so here's the problem. And I'm, I'm not going to mince words. Um these, these, these state-sponsored groups and this disinformation, they are using the Facebooks and the Googles and the, the infrastructures in place of these companies. Mm -hmm. There's a model that says, you know what? Give people information based on what they like, what they are most passionate about, give them more of that. And then once we know what they're most passionate about and what they're responding to the most, suggest things to them that will influence their behavior that will have a great economic benefit to someone. To I kind of put it at a high level. But these state-sponsored actors, they're just using the platform. The tools, like yeah. Like I said earlier, they're using it with a different end goal. Destabilize mm -hmm. the, a country. Mm -hmm. Cause a riot. Get a certain candidate elected. And so... He said, what can we do? Mm -hmm. Well, this is the, the Facebooks and Googles. They know this is happening. Mm -hmm. They know it's happening, but, but because there's so much money and influence and power, I'm not against money. I'm not against companies making money. What mm -hmm. I'm against, if you know, certain state sponsored actors are using the technology that you have put in place to, 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 for malicious ends, in gains, that is, you have a responsibility to stop it. And right. they, they could. There's ways they could monitor which type of users they provision accounts for and which mm. type of information. But what you'll hear is, well, you know, we just, people have a right to say what they want. Well, they, well, they really don't if they're terrorists. Yeah. And, and not to get too political, back to the technical part of it, mm. right? Mm. The platform, like the computers don't... Un they don't know what's good or bad. Right. The algorithm does not know what's good or bad. It just knows what you care about. Right. 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 So the way this, if, if big tech's not going to make some changes where they put controls in place to either monitor who's using these platforms and benefiting from the algorithms, then the onus has to be on us mm -hmm. in society. Yeah. And this is so that's what our organization is doing. Our organization is saying, hey, forget the petition to Google or Facebook. Mm -hmm. Be more responsible. Mm -hmm. You should keep keep election fraud and disinformation. Like there was a campaign, I won't go into it, but the worst thing you could say about a person was said mm -hmm. about Biden and it was being disinformation yep. really heavily. Mm -hmm. They know that they could stop that. Mm -hmm. Right. But so the you money's... say, well, what do we do? Mm -hmm. It the onus is falls on us. So in mm -hmm. our organization, from an awareness standpoint, we're letting people know, hey, listen, social media is being used for disinformation. It's being uh, used to 
raise your kids, control what they think, manipulate what, how they feel about things and themselves. Same thing with you. You're aware of it now. Now let's give you the education so your no news feed you're getting every day stops being a propaganda tool. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't get news in your news feed that you care about or you're a right, you have a right to have your own beliefs. I, I'm not saying that, whether it's Republican, Democrat, socialist, liberal, whatever. whatever. Mm -hmm. But we have to all start agreeing on one set of facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. And the news I feed right now just creates mul a multitude of them. And so what we can do with something like Priv, mm -hmm. that tech tool I told you about, yeah. and education on how to responsibly use social media, which my organization has videos for, and checklists, different tools and education where people can, can change their relationship with tech, starting with the news feed. And so, so the solution to me is don't waste your time asking Google to have a conscience or, or Facebook. We can make the change ourselves. We can control what our, the direction and the relationship our family has with technology mm -hmm. and the information that comes. So when that state-sponsored actor is pushing something through Facebook, I have told my kid, listen, you know, let's set your controls in social media and on this app I've given, Priv app. And mm -hmm. I've told my kid, I've explained it to him. No son, mm -hmm. we're blocking this because this is what it is. Right. You tell your daughter, I told my, you know, so that, that the solution's with us. And now we have the technology where people can kind of be more of the solution. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I think that makes sense too. Um, and it's really unfortunate that we haven't seen more productive um, legislature to rein in some of these actors as well, because it's on, it's a bipartisan issue too. I mean, both sides of the aisle are complaining for different reasons, mind for you. different reasons. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. But, but with all the, the legislation and people going before Congress, what is the end result every time? Yeah. Uh, standstill usually. Yeah. Nothing happens. And so yeah. what I'm trying to say is I believe the community can be its own Congress. I like that. That's a good soundbite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but you know, I, I've never said that before. I just, you know, it fits what you said. And, and, and oh. the reason why I'm bringing that up is because, you know, again, it's important not to control what people think. I'm yeah. not saying that just because someone believes in Trump or believes in Biden, they're a bad person. Right. What I'm saying is right now, how the person generates their beliefs needs to be based on a reality and a certain set of agreed upon facts. And right now you don't have that. So, yeah. and the community, but the communities can, can control this, right? There yeah. are ways to, I don't want to, I'll give you one example. Sure. So one of the training classes is to, to effectively manage how you use social media. So guess what? Facebook, if you want to use Facebook, fine. But Facebook, instead of pulling my data 24 hours a day, you're going to be turned off. I'm going to allow, you allow your son or daughter to use Facebook from 5 to 7 p.m. at night when they get out of school. Other than mm -hmm. that, it's turned off. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why does that matter? I'll explain. If there's a 24 hours a day, this phone is on, it's constantly getting information about you versus two hours a day. Mm -hmm. What people don't understand with data privacy, it's really a short shelf life. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Four years ago, just think about something you were doing. Yeah. Today, you may not be doing the same thing, or you may be doing it differently or less. Yo, and, for sure. Yeah, and, and, and my point is, if you limit the amount of data Facebook's getting, the algorithm needs data to, to, to push out these targeted messages. So think about going from 24 hours a day to two hours a day. Right. That's right. like 90% reduction in the amount of data that they're getting about your life yeah. and over an extended period of time. So, so before where they know exactly what a person thinks, what they do, what they click on, where they go, there are a lot of gaps now. And, right. and honestly, eventually that data 
is not useful anymore because it's either too many gaps or not enough. Mm. Yeah, you, you, see see, you, you, you see what I mean? So oh, if sure. everybody started putting Facebook on timeout for, for 20 plus hours a day, only mm -hmm. using it certain hours, mm -hmm. well, you know, right. before you know it, that data is not useful or it expires. And right, right. Well, oh, no, you just got me thinking. Um, and I know Facebook's one of the most egregious culprits in this space, but they also own uh, WhatsApp and Instagram. So they have, which, yeah, I mean. Uh, it's the same thing. <laughs> right, right. And I think you're right. I think educating the users and having them change their behavior is a good mm -hmm. Better step potentially, I th think if I understand you right, then we're kind of relying on uh, governments to initiate laws to kind of combat big tech um, for various reasons. Let, right? let, me, let me give you another example you just made me think about. Mm -hmm. Also, what if you turned off location data from Facebook? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now it never knows where you're going. Right. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the geolocation data, but, but you, you, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to point out is, you can decide what data these apps have access to through mm -hmm. our tool and through training and education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, it's none of their business and you have the technology to make that choice. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, I just wanted to say that um, the goal is to put the power back in the hands of the people. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there yeah. was a saying, this revolution will not be televised, to put the power back in the hands of the people. Tech is for the people. So whatever happens with Facebook, it, you know, I'm less concerned about that. And I'm more right. concerned about getting as many, using music and other ways to get as many people as possible to take control of their lives and their personal information. Yeah. And then yeah. that, the rest will take care of itself. Right. Uh, a quick question related to uh, deep fake audio and deep fake video. I was very concerned and still am that this was going to be more of an issue, you know, affecting elections and mm -hmm. uh, probably creating a geopolitical uh, turmoil just in general. But, you know, I mean, it's like Adobe Photoshop. The The tools themselves are kind of agnostic, right? Even even as disturbing as it is to see these deep fakes, um, you know, used for bad. I've heard people come up with tons of ways that one could do it the day of a, uh, of a stocks IPO or an earnings day, mm -hmm. right? You could have, you, you know, someone saying something crazy and tank the stock price and you could be shorting the stock or, you know, maybe there's something I'm not even thinking about related to like, Oh, you can start a war even, or, or um, I don't know, is this kind of more me reaching or is this a real? Concern? No, no, it's not you reaching. And this is where I have a problem with, with I'm picking on Facebook because they deserve to be picked on. It's mm -hmm. just because they're too smart not to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. They're just not doing anything. In this situation, Facebook, the algorithm and the technology knows if you provide a picture that has been doctored or altered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you altered a stock quote and you photoshopped it or it. And so in my opinion, uh, I'm sorry, in my opinion, this, this type of disinformation and the technology people that own these platforms looking the other way because people have a right to express themselves. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was just thinking, I mean, I know there are these startups that that are claiming to um, authenticate that this isn't synthetic media and they can put a watermark potentially on something. I'm just wondering if um, if that's the solution, right? Re relying on um, some so seemingly I altruistic third party to kind of authenticate the media for us and partner with Facebook, but then we're running into, uh, now I'm catching myself. I kind of see where you're going with this, actually. No, no, the, 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 no, you're making really good points. The problem with what you just, I don't want to say the problem with what you just said, because it's a valid point. I'm not attacking your statement. What I'm saying, that. though, is a third party comes up with this great thing. And this is the problem we have in society right now. This is why our organization has a different uh, approach and, and model. Mm -hmm. A third party comes with this great thing. People still have to use it. And people mm -hmm. still have to trust it. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what happens, it's it's not throwing more weight behind coming with the perfect technology. That is not, to me, that's not this. Yes, you need technology. But first, you need the people to understand what is happening and then being willing to, to 
I don't want to say self-regulate, but be willing to say, you know what, for my life and my relationship with tech, technology, this is what it is. Take it or leave it. Right, right. Have, being willing to either manage Facebook responsibly, like I said, it's only so many hours a day, only access to certain types of data, or also being willing to walk away and say, you know what, tell you what, Facebook, have a nice life. Same with Google. You know, mm-hmm. there's ways you can use Google more responsibly. Right. Sure. And yeah, we yeah. teach people. Um, yep. If not, there are other browsers to use. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because right now, these platforms, again, are tracking you mm-hmm. and monitoring everything you're doing. So, so this is where the music comes in. Mm. Consider our company is like that third party you just described. Mm-hmm. We've come in with some cool tools. Tools. Mm-hmm. People have to be able to use them. And, and the thing that's really important, we're, we're positioning ourselves because we want people to trust us because mm-hmm. we're trustworthy. We're mm-hmm. a, a good tech company that is trustworthy. So listen, we'll identify some problems. We're going to tell you about it, make you aware, hope, probably through music. We're going to educate you. And then we're going to give you the technology so you can do something about it. You can right. trust us and we will earn your trust over a period of time. Mm-hmm. We want to be like, I essentially want us to be almost like the cybersecurity company for, for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're starting the 1600 National Cybersecurity Center, which will allow communities to enroll in for services from our nonprofit that need cyber services, need inform- training on privacy. But to, but to sum it up through this 1600 National Cybersecurity Center or whatever else we're doing, mm-hmm. the technology, if people don't use it and trust it, serves no purpose. And that's why I want to work with Gordon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he knows the technology needs the community. That's where I come in. And I know mm-hmm. to get the community to use the technology and get their attention, we need the music. Right, right, right. So... Yeah, the third party tool is a good idea, but will it have an effect? Mm, I hope so. Right. But I don't think so. Right, right. No, I think just educating people too, you know, and the music is a great way to reach people in that way. You're kind of uh, bringing them into these issues. And even we're picking on Facebook, but then I just started thinking, you know, Spotify, I remember reading months ago something about they can gauge your mood based on what songs you're listening to. So they like all do it. they all do it. I, I know I'm saying Facebook because I, I Facebook I have a particular distaste for because I feel like that they are being used as a political tool more than the others. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they all do the same thing. And and so I people need to be aware and they need to know they can do something about it. We don't have to keep it's it's almost like if you you've seen a couple you've got mm-hmm. this whoever the guy whatever type of couple it is um, mm-hmm. and you see one person is abusing the other person mm-hmm. but the person stays in the relationship and mm-hmm. sometimes you go talk to the person like well why don't you just leave mm-hmm. and the person has been I don't want to say brainwashed but they have they're, they they've gone through so much. Yeah. A lot of times they, they don't realize they're being abused and that life could be any different than what it is. Right. Yeah. And Stockholm so, syndrome. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a psychologist, but the point is the relationship people have with tech right now is unhealthy. Mm, mm. Tech yeah, is I mean, getting most of the benefits or not all of them. The right. user, the communities are not getting anything back. And the, the end result of this, uh, these algorithms and this misuse is either people are getting hacked or we're getting more racism or more political unrest or hatred. All this stuff is the product of this, of the way tech's being used. It's right. unhealthy, just like yeah. that unhealthy relationship where you see someone being beaten or, you know, belittled or, you know, and, and so what I'm just saying to people is use tech, have a relationship and let us show you how to have a proper relationship where there's mutual respect and actually you are in charge. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Um, uh, 
well, we're going on an hour here and I don't want to take up too, too much more of your time. Uh, and Priyanka had a list of questions that I kind of threw out the window after I did research on you. I'm like, we got this guy in here. We can't, you know, we got to, um, I had things I wanted to ask you about and, and it's been really um, no, awesome. Man, to not to be angry with you, but honestly, um, I feel like you did a great job. And the questions, oh, thank you. questions I hope, I hope are impactful to people and gives them something to think about. Right. Yeah. And I'll leave you with the last word too. And maybe I'll throw a little curveball at you. I'll give you one more if you don't mind. And then sure. um, I, I was talking to um, Andy Bates a couple of weeks ago, who I think, you know, from the global cyber Alliance, Andy Bates. Yes. Yeah, we did a, we did a, a, a panel together. Yeah. He's great. Uh, oh, great. cool. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, uh, really great guy. He, um, he, he surprised me on the call. He was talking about there being kind of a silver lining to the pandemic. Obviously, more people are working remotely and and they're kind of more cognizant of, you know, what they're doing. Are they using VPN? Are they using two-factor mm-hmm. authentication? I'm wondering if you're seeing this as well or um, did the pandemic exacerbate the situation or, or did it kind of teach people about um, cyber or I don't know? Well, unfortunately, during the pandemic, cyber uh, activity uh, sharply increased because right. essentially what you had happened, I don't know, Andy's an optimist. He's optimistic. But, mm-hmm. uh, but essentially what you have happened is you, you quadrupled the attack surface. Mm. For hackers, for businesses, they wanted to hack someone. It was a corporate network. Well, now people are, the corporate network is it's extended into somebody's living room and in that part of the this network, there's several um, security, um, there's, there's several uh, vulnerabilities that could be exploited just because of the home work environment. Mm. VPN's exploitable, right? A lot of remote tools are exploitable. Zoom it wasn't really exploitable for a while, mm. right? So um, the problems increase, the attack service increase. If there was a silver, li- silver lining, I do think that it made people rethink things like insider threat and mm-hmm. and uh, making sure you have the protections in place, your policies for like remote working were, mm-hmm. were proper. And then also like, I do think multi-factor authentication or 2FA increased during this time. So I guess that is kind of a silver lining, but I, I really think the cyber criminals, especially from a fraud and phishing perspective, they just had a field day during the COVID because, you know, hey, you've been tested, um, you know, your neighbor's been tested and they are positive, you need to call in and make a test. Oh, oh, right, you're talking like- Or, you know, yeah. hey, you know, um, could you send money, give us your account so we can make sure your health insurance will cover your COVID test. These right. types of things were amplified yeah, so much. No, no, that's a good point, that's true. Uh, well, Frank, Again, I won't keep you too much longer. I could um, talk to you for hours and hours. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed the conversation. I, I do want to tell people, um, if you'd like to volunteer for 1600 Avenue, it's www.1600avenue.com. Anybody who cares about tech being used for good and has passion, we would love to get you to support us. If there's any other way you can support us, please look at the website. And on the other side, if you need professional cyber consulting, uh, www.1600cyber.com. And we will we can do anything you want, whether it's ransomware, um, reverse malware engineering, SIEM support, whatever it is, we're happy to help. We're virtual CISO. Very cool. Sorry for the plug, but no. I, I, want, I want people to just reach out. It's not, a, and it's just not about money. Right mm-hmm. now, I, I just feel tech people who have cyber backgrounds are not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to, to no. Make, yeah, no, I think you're right. Problem, so. I think you're right. Uh, well, Frank, I've only uh, known you for, well, I've only known you for an hour, but I've only even known of you for 24 hours, and I've been very, very, very impressed. So um, thank you yeah, so I much. Doing, I think you're doing great things, and uh, uh, we were really lucky to have you here on the Manage Engine Insights podcast. That brings us to the end of today's podcast. Thank you very much to Frank and a big thank you to everyone for listening. If you have any feedback or any comments, please leave them in the comments section and we'll get back to you. And please stay tuned for our next installment.